Hello, my Arcade friends! This is Arid. In game name is September on the Thunderwing and the PTS server. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to cover some stuff that I think is interesting. So sit tight, uh, grab a drink, and let's go through these topics quickly but thoroughly. Okay, so what I'm going to cover is the Aranor leveling process proc rates, and that's pertaining to the bonus XP. We're also going to talk about the current RNG boxes, which is the Flaming Soul Scar, as well as the Eclipse Knight. And then we're also going to be taking a look at the Melisara's Lunastone, as well as the Melisara's Puzzle Box. And then we're going to have a small chat about 4.5. Okay, so the first thing up, some of you longtime subscribers may have been wondering, what have I been up to? And if you don't follow me on Discord, Twitch, or Twitter, you probably didn't know that I had just gotten back from a vacation. While that is mostly irrelevant to the topic of Arcage, it actually did keep me away from my computer, which means that is why there was no Twitch stream last week or any YouTube videos. But I am back now, and I want to pack as much stuff into this video as possible uh, so you guys can get up to date with me. And so here's just a small little clip of uh, what I was doing on my vacation. So this is a video of a rocket launch. It's short. I'm just going to play it for you real quick and then talk about that and move right along. Range is the Air Force. They get permission to launch. They control the airspace. We're down to 15 seconds. Watch the launch pad. That's a delay, okay? You can watch both, but that's... T-minus 40 seconds. Watch the pad. You'll see the big red flame going up first. There it goes. It's lightening up. It's lighting up now. Watch, watch. Here we go. 28 seconds. 25. Status check. Go Atmos. Go Centaur. Go Sippers. There you go. Get ready for the rumble. It's going to come across the water here any minute now. It won't hurt you. Just, just be ready for 10, a rumble. 9, right, 8, well, thank you for the 7, 6, Five, a rumble. Four, a rumble. three, two, we have ignition and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the fourth space-based infrared system for the United States Air Force. So that was the video as I experienced it from the observation area at the Kennedy Space Center. We were 5.1 miles away from the actual launch and that audio is off so it's not like i messed up on this <laughs> this video here it is actually how i heard it so i know it feels a little weird when you hear the 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 launch countdown and the rockets already in the air uh but what it what it actually happened was we had a local person talking and we also had the official nasa feed and the nasa feed was delayed for about 30 seconds but regardless of the fact that the audio and the visuals didn't match even in person it was just an awesome awesome experience and i'm glad that i got to be part of it so here is a quick screenshot of the actual rocket that was, was launched and somebody published that recently the day of the launch so it looked really really cool a night launch was awesome and here is an image of me i am in the uh the, the uh, launch observation complex and this was one of the exhibits in there and when I first that my sister took this photo and when I first saw it I thought man who is that and then I realized it was me but at first I thought I looked like uh, John Caparulu uh, the comedian and I'm like no no that's not it that's me uh, anyway okay so uh, we're gonna move right along here to the the Arc Age stuff, and the first topic that I want to talk about is the Aranor proc rates. So uh, I have actually been working on getting some data, some hard data, to update my Aranor weapon, armor, and accessory spreadsheets. I know a lot of you guys for the weapons you're over there using Omnoms, which are great. Mine are based off of those, so uh, we don't really care whose you use, but... Uh, with 4.0, if you're not aware of it, they added some uh, a new feature with the Aranor items in that as you do, as you feed in the Aranor items, there is a chance that you'll gain some XP. 
However, in typical Excel fashion, we actually got no information on how often those procs can or are supposed to occur. And we also didn't get any information about what, what kind of XP bonus we're supposed to be getting. Uh, it was basically, in short, what they did in, what was it, 3.0, they took out the RNG from upcrafting. So as you craft from Illustrious to Ionad, you don't have to get the specific type uh, any, any longer. So they removed the RNG there. But what do they do? At the end of it, when you finally get to the last item, the Aranor, they put this RNG system back in with this quote-unquote bonus XP proc, which happens randomly, but they basically neglected to give us any information uh, about that other than it can happen. So this made uh, trying to calculate the cost to upgrade your air nor through the various tiers, you know, from crude or basic to grand and grand to rare, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It made those spreadsheets basically inaccurate uh, because there's no uh, there's no calculations for that bonus XP. So I talked to Mark at Omnom.io and we both were aware of this problem. And I, he's busy doing other stuff, so I sat down uh, a couple weeks ago and tried to solve this problem myself. And so what I did is I combined a bunch of Aridor stuff, and I came out with finding the average bonus XP as well as the average proc rate. And then we can use those numbers to uh, evaluate the cost of upgrading your Aridor. So what I did, and as if you follow my channel, you'll know I typically always do these spreadsheets, and there will be a link to this spreadsheet in the video description, and this will be able to help you basically figure out the new cost in 4.0 of upgrading your Aeronorm. Um, I actually want, I was actually kind of in torn here. Did I want to do a new spreadsheet now, or with the information that we know is coming in 4.5, uh, there is going to be some changes with the crafting system in general, and it's going to make all these spreadsheets obsolete anyway. Uh, but this this bonus proc XP system, uh, this proc bonus and this bonus XP is currently in the game right now. So I thought I would put this out here for you now so you can use it as you see fit. So I'm not going to completely outline all this stuff just because of the time. But let's, let's take a look at the spreadsheet, and I'll give you the pertinent information. Okay, so what I did is I did a total of 647 combines. I think that's wrong, but my notes say 647. Um, ranging on all the items that I combined were either unique all the way up to legendary grade. I don't think the grade matters, but I, I can see that uh, being a question. Uh, so out of those 640-ish combines, I had a total of 97 procs, which is, you know, the bonus XP, which means the proc rate or the chance of getting any bonus XP is 15%. Additionally, each time I did get bonus XP, uh, I recorded the amount or the percentage of the bonus and so you'll see that down here, which is 61.082. Uh, of all the procs, the highest that I observed was 99.4%, and the lowest was 21.3%. And if you just want to speak in general, general terms, you can get anywhere from 20 to double X, 20% uh, to. 100% uh, bonus XP or up to double XP and that XP is based off of the items that you are feeding into your Aranor. Okay so now we can actually take these modifiers and you know run some math here and get a bonus amount of XP that you can get if you plan on feeding stuff into your Aranor item. And I've worked out a formula for you and here it is verbally which is not going to make much sense but I'll explain it here more. Um, you would basically take the XP of the item that you're, you know, the XP amount that you're going to be getting. You multiply that by the bonus XP amount, 
and then you multiply that by the chance of the proc and then you finally add in the amount of XP all right so yeah like I said that's gonna sound a little bit complicated but once you see it it'll probably hopefully make sense to you so let's do one real quick example okay so so let's say you're feeding in a couple items that pay you exactly 100 XP. Uh, remember, you have to feed in two items. So just imagine it in your mind, if you will, uh, we're feeding in two items that are worth 50 XP each. So you multiply that by the 61.082, uh, which is the average bonus XP amount. Um, and that'll give you a total bonus XP of 61.082. And then you multiply the chance of you actually getting that to proc, which is 15.16%. So you multiply 61.082 times 0.1516, which gives you 9.25. And then you add in the original XP amount, which, as I said before, was 100, which means that if you are feeding in 100 XP uh, worth of items, the average that you should be getting is now 109.25 XP. Or generally put, that is a 9.25% more XP per item uh, that you were getting um, prior to 4.0. Or if you want to look at it another way, it takes you 9.25% less XP to level up your item. Um, honestly, if you want to be very general about it and just round it up and say, uh, you know, based on the sample size, which, yeah, 600 and what was it, 40 is quite a lot of combines to sit down and record in the grand scheme of things, which is all Excel thinks about. Uh, it is not a lot of items. Um, so if you just want to think of it generally, you would say it's about 10% more XP per item overall in the long run. Okay, so let's move on to the Melisara's Luna Stone. Uh, this is a new item that uh, goes basically on your wardrobe only. And this gives you a half a percent crit rate bonus each time you do damage, which stacks up to seven times. Uh, so far, this actually appears to be the probably the best in slot for the damage classes of all these little Luna Stones that they keep putting out. Because when you fully activate it, you're going to get an additional 3.5% critical rate. And the reason I emphasize percent is we are talking about percents. So if you have a high base chance your bonus is actually higher than three and a half percent. So I've got September standing here in uh, Yenistir on Thunderwing, and I am going to be attacking a training dummy. And if you look here, his magical crit critical rate right now with all his stuff on is 55.1%. And we're going to attack this training dummy, and you're going to watch here as the stacks start building up. Um, it is not exactly each time... Uh, you attack moreover like each time you attack within allotted like every one and a half seconds or something like that. Eventually, you'll see that it has climbed up to 59.2% critical rate, which is actually a bonus of 4.2%. And um, that is just based off of my base XP of 50, or base critical rate of 55.1%. There's other people out there I'm quite sure of that have a higher rate uh, without this activation and they would benefit greater than I am currently here in this short video. Okay, so next up is the Melisara's Puzzle Box. This is actually a combo platter that provides you two items. The first one is a legendary assassin costume, which September has been wearing this whole video here on the PTS. And here's a screenshot for you of what it looks like on the login screen. Uh, once you open this box here, we've got one on September. I'll pop this open. You'll see you get the costume and you also get the title, which is called Legendary Assassin. Ooh. Uh, what what you actually get is that the, the title there as well as the 
bonus effect if you choose to equip it, which is plus four attack or healing or and or healing, as well as 150 additional health, as well as a whopping 10 magic or melee defense and or melee defense. Um, personally, okay, okay, it's nice, all right, it's nice, but I actually hate when XL or Tryon, whoever you want to blame for this stuff, puts these items exclusively in the cash shop or the credit shop. I mean, there's no way to buy this with loyalty or honor or anything else. You have to buy credits. I do not agree with that, and this is one of the cases. So for me, I'm not very happy about this, but it is what it is, and there you go. Okay, next up, we're going to be moving on to the Eclipse Knight crate as well as the Flaming Soul Scar crate. If you follow my channel, you know I try to do these videos all the time. You can look in my v bag and see that I have 300 each of these. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to subject you guys to watching me open these up, even at a sped up pace. You should know by now that I do open these up and I record that data and I give it to you all in a spreadsheet. This is going to be no different. Um, you've, you've watched enough videos and I, hopefully you trust me enough know, to know that I'm not going to add or subtract something from what I show you. It is what it is. If you don't believe me, I'm sorry, but I don't think I should subject you every week or every time there's a new box to pretty much the same type of video. I just wanted to add a real quick info. Uh, what I noticed in, out of the Eclipse crate was there was a lot of these auction house mannequins and a lot of single unstackable items. I ended up running out of room and as you can see I ended up having to visit a chest and try to sort this stuff out. But what you can see here, uh, starting with this line here where the Eclipse costumes are, I got uh, seven of those. And I actually had to fuse them with the auction house mannequins because I just was running out of room. And these are unbound, or, or I'm sorry, these are bound, so I can't even put these in the chest. So I have to keep these on my person or in a you know warehouse or something. I, I'm not a big fan of this whole auction house mannequin system. And I, I guess it's nice if you want to sell the costumes, but these things are, are not stackable and they just basically hog up a lot of room. Um, so people are probably just going to end up throwing them away, and that's a shame uh, because they do have some value, but only if you're trying to sell a costume. Um, and I did the spreadsheet, and there will be a link to this in the uh, video description. So if you want to see exactly how many of everything that I got, please visit spreadsheet section of the description. All right, so this is what we got in the Eclipse Night Crate. All right, so this is what we got in the Flaming Soul Scar crate. All right, so that was 300 Flaming Soul Scar crates. This one actually was much easier to manage, uh, starting with this line here with this uh, the Sunlight Archeum Moonlight, and just basically in this area here. Uh, here's a quick look at the spreadsheets. Uh, nothing really interesting. I mean, nothing really crazy new out of it. Uh, the regrade charms, there was these wrapped uh, migration scales, wrapped skill saver pendants, the wingmaker scrolls. Those have been in RNG boxes before, but not often. And then wrapped serendipity stones, very, very rare. I also noticed that it feels like that this box should have dropped the resplendent weapon tippers. But even after 300 boxes, I didn't get a single one. So mm, I don't know. And also... It also felt like I should have gotten lucky star points, and I did not get any. So check out the uh, spreadsheet, and uh, you can get a full list and the drop ratios of everything out of these 300 boxes. Spreadsheet will be linked in the description. Okay, so lastly, I would like to take a quick moment to talk about 4.5. Uh, I hope you've all had an opportunity to check out Omnom.io for the upcoming 4.5 info. I know I spoke with Mark yesterday. He is hard at work right now trying to get all those skill changes translated for you. That is a try on, quote, big job. Uh, he is actually working hard on it, and I know that's a lot to do. He said the first time he translated the ones 
from the focus test or group testing. Uh, it took him like a month to do. So, and he's back at school. So he's really, really, really trying hard to get those out as quickly as possible for you guys. Um, and I also want to say something else about 4.5. It has been in a very, very long time for me. I actually see a ray of hope and change for Arc Age. Uh, I actually just, just really feel like XL has, for whatever reason, all of a sudden started listening to us community over here in North America and EU. Uh, and they seem to be, at least on the changes that I'm seeing in 4.5, they're really trying to make the game better and more appealing to a larger player base. Um, but the most interesting thing that I actually have heard about 4.5 has been said by Tryon, and let's take a look at that. Um, and of course, 4.5 is the next big thing on the horizon, uh, and we will be getting 4.5 as well. Uh, obviously, we're going to be taking other measures into our own hands. Uh, we've talked about uh, fresh start servers will be on the horizon for this year. We have not announced dates yet for when that will be, mm -hmm. uh, but 4.5 is definitely coming up pretty soon. Uh, and we're currently in the process of beginning our translation. Uh, we've started to receive builds for it, so the work is beginning, and uh, we're setting dates around that. So mm -hmm. players have actually, you know, started saying, "Oh, when's that going to be? Is it going to be like forever ago? Is it going to be forever from now?" Ooh, as I slap the poor elk around here, uh, it's going to be pretty soon, as a matter of fact. And we hope to have more information and talk about that um, on the horizon. Uh, until then, uh, I can say just keep keep tuned in. Uh, players are making a lot of guesses and ideas of when the dates could be. I can assure you, right as of right now, for the dates that we're discussing, many players are wrong. So they're going a little bit too far this way. Wow. Maybe they should move back up a bit. Wow, so. that's that's quite the little sneak peek there. Okay. So I actually tried to watch uh, all the other creators for Arc Age. I hope you guys are too. There's a lot of them out there. Uh, and uh, we've got Never, we've got Quimbeck, we've got Jolan with the Paradox Gaming Network. Um, well, uh, we've got Sparks is Grounded. Uh, we've got uh, you, well, I, I forget your name. I think it's Yuri that does the, the house building and the decoration stuff. I mean, I try to watch all that stuff. Um, but... The reason I mention that is because I believe the only other person that said anything about the guesstimate of when 4.5 is going to be coming to our regions uh, was Joe Lawn from the uh, Paradox Gaming Network. And him and I both, I believe he said uh, June or July, and I said May or June. Uh, so we put it basically in the summer of 2018 which that was basically just based off of what happened with 4.0. We were really six months behind Korea and barely even got it then. Um, we had it pushed back. So, you know, with what was going on there, um, that was our best guesstimate. And him and I both, uh, we didn't talk about it, but, you know, we do talk and, he and I both both came up with the same basic ballpark of when we thought 4. or 4.5 was going to come out. Uh, but you just heard it from Celestrata there. She was referring to s some people out in the community, which, again, like I said, I try to watch everybody, and him and I are the only two that I've heard even try to, uh, to guess. And she said that we were off, uh, way off. So I'm going to actually take this moment to update my guess to be late March, early April, which would put it about three to three and a half months behind Korea. And uh, in the grand scheme of Arc Age and the XL Tryon relationship, I think three months is the closest that we've ever gotten. So uh, for them to be shooting to get back to that gap would be really great. But as we get back to uh, our as 4.0, Five looms ever closer and as we hear more i'll keep you updated well that is it for me today uh i hope you all have really had a wonderful year so far for me it's actually been fantastic i haven't been on a vacation uh, since i was a kid 20 years ago so i'm very very grateful i got to see a rocket launch in person uh, that's something i've wanted to do ever since i was that little kid 
Um, I also am very, very optimistic that Arcage is now uh, moving in the a good direction, if you will, uh, with the information that we know about 4.5. Uh, for me, this thus far, uh, this has been a good year. Uh, I also always hope that you have found this video not only helpful, but also informative. And uh, if you're new here, please just hit that subscribe button. You'll get more of this stuff. <laughs> Uh, if you have enjoyed this video, uh, you can also hit the like button. Uh, remember to catch me on Twitch every Friday after Tryon uh, does the arcade stream or at the time that they're supposed to do one uh, for any giveaways of the Tryon creator codes that I do have. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitch, Twitter, as well as uh, Discord. That information will be in the video description. And if you want to kick up your support to the next level, uh, you can become a Patreon for as little as $1. So until next time, this is September saying, be well.